Good afternoon, I'm here at Welbeck where today the visitors are the West Indian Cavaliers. The West Indian Cavaliers have won the toss and have decided to field first. As you can see behind me, they are clearing the field, ready to begin play in a few minutes time. As you can see behind me, the covers are on as rain has halted play after eight overs. Welbeck are currently in bat at 30 for two. Adam Burgess was caught for 15 behind the stumps by Aaron Thomas after six overs and unfortunately Johnny Lotes went for a duck. Usman, your position in the match? Oh, it's been uh, fantastic as you can see, it's quite a damp morning and a bit of cold in the air. Uh, but obviously Welbeck have looked after the ground facilities quite well, but 30 for two, I think we're in a very strong position here. Now you're not playing today, you're injured. How did you get injured? Yeah, no, I'm, unfortunately I'm not. I, uh, I got injured last Saturday when we played against uh, Plumtree. Uh, I dived in the outfield to attempt to catch and, uh, and I fell really heavily on my, on my shoulder and I, and I actually dislocated my shoulder. So, uh, yeah, pretty painful um, and obviously, again, you know, not playing this week. Hopefully it'll just be a one-week thing, but, uh, but we'll have to see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, disappointed not to be, not to be playing. <laughs> All today's matches are now time games. Peter, what is a time game? A time game is when 30 minutes play has been lost in a match. The overs in the match cannot be reduced. It remains a 100 over game. But the match has to finish at 8 o'clock and subject to 16 overs being bowled in the last hour of the game. Clearly, if a lot of time is lost during the course of the game, some matches will not finish. But bonus points are awarded to each side if the second innings has commenced. The players are coming back onto the field after another short delay due to a small downpour. Welbeck are currently on 68 for two after 17 overs and they're hoping to increase this as it's looking to be brighter. Play's resumed after another short break for rain. Welbeck's score has now moved on to 89 for three of 21 overs. The man out since my last report, Mad Higgins, caught by Sean Levy at mid-off off the bowling of Afsal, who had just come into the attack. Welbeck's moved on to 154 for seven. A bit of a collapse in the Welbeck innings here. Um, four men have gone very, very quickly. French was caught Anderson, bowled out of South for 32. Ball came and went very quickly for a swift eight, caught Khan bowled Patel. And Merchant, who scored an impressive 36, was bowled by Ofsal. And David Hunt, last week's double centurion for their, for their fourth team, um, came and went very, very quickly. Um, currently we have 16 overs still to go to T, but the Cavaliers will now be looking to wrap this up very quickly with only three wickets left. If they can take the wickets very quickly, then they have a fair chance of winning this game. So we're at a very interesting stage of the match. So you see this more of a game of bonus points at this point in time? Yes, I think we do. Um, 
well Becker seem to be holding their own against the Cavs bowlers and uh, we've, we've got spinners on at both ends from the from the Cavaliers trying to to bat on and get the uh, overs bowled uh, but uh, we're looking at a, we're looking at a, a very uh, sort of bonus orientated game I think Yes, I'm with Bilal Shafi at uh, Welbeck Colliery. Um, Bilal will be batting number three today, but he's taken the time to talk to us. Bilal, you're chasing 162. Can you get these? Yeah, I think we can. Um, the wicket played uh, very well, actually. Um, it took a little bit of spin, but uh, early doors, it wasn't uh, moving sideways too much um, with, the, with the new ball. So um, we'll back our batsmen to knock these off. Bilal, if you win today, you could go top of the league this evening. That'd be brilliant, um, you know, and we're going to just keep pushing uh, each game at a time and really go for it, you know. We're, we're trying to, we set out to win the league every year um, and it'll be a good, healthy competition this year. We're currently in the middle of the tea break at Welbeck, where Welbeck set a score of 161 all out in the 45th over. Top scorers came from Andrew Marchant, who scored 36, and Rob French, 32. With the sun shining at the moment, we're pretty confident that the Western Union Cavaliers will get at least 40 to 45 overs. So with 162 the target, on, will it be possible for West Indian Cavaliers to take the points? The state of the match at the moment says that we're going to lose quite easily. Um, the, the opposition, the Cavaliers, are going quite well at 37 for naught, and uh, obviously we're only posted 161, which is quite a disappointing total. Um, we actually batted quite well, some of our lads, but they just got out at the wrong time, and, and it was bad shot selection that we need to really have a look at. I understand there's an important game coming up here at Welbeck. Could you be able to just give a brief introduction to that for me? In August we've got the England Legends uh, against the Welbeck side which is going to be really good. Uh, it's a 20 over game, uh, it's on, I can't remember the exact date but it's, uh, it's a Friday in August to look out for and um, th there's many opportunities. You'll hear a lot more about it coming up, running up to the day. So Martin, obviously you're the captain of Welbeck. Um, what got you in cricket in the first place? Uh, I think probably similar to a lot of people really. My my dad used to play uh, and I had a, a brother that was two years older than me. So yeah, kind of my youngest memories really are, are being dragged to cricket grounds on a Saturday afternoon to watch dad play. And and we just inevitably played on the outfield, played on, you know off the boundary rope with other kids that were there. And, and that that's how I got into it. Um, you know, before him, my granddad played. So yeah, real sort of family thing for me. Um, is it just Welbeck you've played for, or have you obviously moved through several teams until the stage you're at now? Uh, no, I've been here now for, I think this is my sixth season here, um, but before then, I'm a, I'm a Lincolnshire boy originally, so I'm from Scunthorpe, uh, but I've played in the Yorkshire League, I played at, had a period of time at Rotherham playing there, um, I then went to the University in Leeds and played in the Huddersfield League, uh, and I spent a bit of time playing in the Lynx League, so I'm a bit of a journeyman really, I've, I've sort of played in a few different counties, um, so yeah. Um, how do their leagues compare in comparison to the Notts Premier League? Is there much difference? Uh, yeah, well, it's a difficult question, really. It's, um, 
I think the the Yorkshire League is is, a, is an ECB Premier League, and I think that that is is sort of fairly similar. Um, the the Lincolnshire League, I think I think that that would probably sit, a, you know, a little bit little bit of a lower standard than the Notts League and and the Huddersfield League probably the same. So I think the Notts League at the moment is is the strongest that it's ever been, and I think it's uh, you know you, and you know you look around the sides and you see the strength in depth that people have got. It's uh, it's it's particularly strong, uh, which is which makes for really exciting cricket. You know, there's lots, lots of teams that can all beat each other, um, which is what we want. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's a very competitive league, really enjoyable. Lots of good players. Obviously, this year we've got the added extra of having Mansfield 103.2 Sport involved. Do you think that's affected the league this year at all? Yeah, I think it has. I think it's helped to to generate a bit of a bit of excitement and a bit of buzz around the place. Hopefully, it's introduced a few people that that have perhaps not been involved in cricket before. Um, so it's got to be a good thing, you know. I think it's it's great that people are talking about it and uh, and that it can be people can tune in and hear what's going on at different grounds. So, so yeah, you know, a fantastic you know innovation and and, and long may it continue. <laughs> Behind me, it's getting really exciting now as the Western Cavaliers are chasing a target of 161. They're currently on 155 for one after 22 overs and it looks like seven more runs and the 20 points will be theirs. Bilal Shafayet and Patel have both hit their half centuries with Shafayet on 70 and Patel on 52. Was it a clear strategy of yours considering the weather to go guns blazing from the start? Um, yeah, I think it started when we were in the field as he put two spinners on, so uh, Usman Asal and Akil Patel uh, bowled the overs very quickly towards the end and hurried for the overs. Uh, didn't want the um, weather to affect the result and uh, wanted to push for the 20 points. <laughs> Peter Johnston is speaking to Cavaliers batsman Bilal Shafayet. Bilal, that was an absolutely breathtaking knock of yours today. Tell us about it. No, um, yeah, it was nice. We spoke at half time, uh, 160. Um, you know, we backed ourselves to chase it. It was a good wicket, providing the weather stayed away from us. Um, the well wet bowlers uh, were hit a little bit hard with Osman Abzal and Akil Patel. In the first five or six overs, we were going at tens um, until we lost Osman Abzal. Um, and I just actually, um, my idea was just to probably see the innings through. But the, like I said, the wicket was very nice to bat on. Um, they went to the spinners um, and they made it easy for us to, to chase this off. Martin, not the best of days for Welbeck today. How did you see this match? Yeah, well, look, it was it was a very disappointing day for us. Um, you know, I think I think what's more disappointing from from our point of view is uh, is the way we performed. Uh, you know, we know that the we know that the Cavaliers are a good team uh, and they've come today and, and they've and they played very well. Um, you know, we've we've not turned up. Uh, we've committed suicide with the bat when we were in a reasonably strong position uh, and succumbed um, to. To two of the slower bowlers for the Cavaliers, and then when we bowled, we, you know they've come out at us and very hard and aggressive, which we knew they would do, and and we've just given them too many too many boundary balls, and uh, and and they've reached their target in a very in a very in very few overs, which which is which is massively disappointing for us. It was nice that me and Akil um, we found a find a good partnership there. Um, and we really cashed in, to be honest, and, and won by nine wickets, so it's a good win. We consolidated and, and we, we built a bit of a partnership um, to get us to 120 for four. 
And then, yeah, you know, we've just played some really naive cricket. We've uh, we've played some, you know, we've, we've been old manned a little bit, if you like, uh, and we've 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 thrown our wickets away. You know, there were, there were some really poor shots played there in, in the middle order, which was which was which was more disappointing than than, than the getting beat. It, like I said, it was it was the way we've gone about it. You know, we've added three, four young guys to the squad um, who have fitted right in. Um, they've scored runs as soon as um, you know the season started. Um, if me and Ozzy missed out in the first couple. The games they scored the younger guys did and you know the new boys uh, so no we're, we're, we're enjoying it um, it's still very early in the season yet and we're just going to keep trying to do the simple things well um, and keep and keep pushing anyone for their money so here at Walbert Colliery we saw Western Cavali Indian Cavaliers take victory with 164 to 1 after 23 overs chasing Walbert's strong score of 161 in their innings the run chase started very strongly with Akil Patel scoring a solid 52 and B Bilal Shafayet a fantastic 78, both obviously claiming their half centuries. But Wel Welbeck's rain hindered innings saw Rob French score 32, which was solid but unfortunately was not enough to see out the game. But what keep kept the score down was West Indian Cavaliers' strong bowling. Patel and Afsal took four wickets each and kept the overall total to 1 6 1. So in what has been a very stop-start day, we've seen West Indian Cavaliers take all 20 points.